crowd here. I was able to get my hands on a um, memory expansion module for the Amiga 500. It's the A501, and it, um, it's one of the original ones that still has the shielding cover on it. And, um, I wouldn't say rare, but less common. Um, the capacity is 512 kilobytes, and this was very unique to the those days computers, Amiga 500s and others, that they actually did not have a real-time clock built into the actual computer. So this has the real-time clock also um, as part of the memory. And um, sadly also it contains a battery, so we have to actually have a look at that. So, but I mean, let's have a look at the module and discuss it. So here we have the module. It's uh, a little bit sort of patina on it, so I do a little restore on it. Um, this is the bottom side, and then you plug it into the Omega 500 um, underneath through a hatchway. We'll be demonstrating that once we've done the restore. And um, this is also unique from the perspective that. This is soldered shut, so this is very much an indicator that this is a, a Commodore original. So anyway, our first um, issue is to, well the first step is to actually get this, um, open it up, so we can actually check the battery that's in here. Let's see what, um, according to the listing, or they provided some print screens that this was actually, um, inserted into an Amiga 500 and reportedly was working so we can hopefully go from the perspective that it's in working order but I'd still like to uh, would actually like to have a look at the, uh, the battery that's in here so let's get that let's get it open so we got to try and remove as much solder as we can I already tested a little bit this is probably going to take longer than it's Interest the film, so I'll probably take the most of them offline. That worked a little better. It's like a big heat sink, this whole case. So, as usual, the last one was the most difficult. <laughs> successful in getting it off. So there. Oh but that looks in the inside looks in really good shape. So it's only the outside that's got the putty in it. It's got a plastic protection. And the circuit board doesn't look that bad. Signs of rework. Let's see. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was easy enough. So you see here, pattern of damage in that specific location where the battery is. Mm. Look at the bat oh, the battery is shot. I mm. wonder if you can see it in the camera. See that needs to be replaced. That is a goner. Yeah, somebody tried to put a bit of solder on it hoping to get a little bit better conductivity, but that that is that is coupled. Let's see if it's ah sadly a bit of battery leakage. I would assume yes. So I'm gonna have to try and try and clean up this area as best I can with contact cleaner. Get rid of that. Maybe replace this capacitor. Uh, 
that's why one has to um, get in here and get get rid of that before it's actually already started to grow components just get enough light to show now I can see the ends of the leads of components so anyway I will try and desolder this one now So I started the process of cleaning up the area. Trying to get not trying not to destroy the board. Even though I think it's kind of soaked into the board a bit. I'm a bit worried about these components here. So it's a question of is it discolorization or I hope that one can I'm hoping that one can save this board. At least the contact cleaner will help to neutralize the acids. Oh, I'll come outside and work a bit. So try and clean these up a little bit and paint those the cover. And then I'm going to try and get rid of Last bit of, I mean, you'll never get this perfect, but I think I'll just take a little bit and see how well it goes. So, just give it like that. the insides it really I don't think it really matters because I, I just put the um, but then there could be these these edges that could be visible so go at least around the edges in the bottom I won't bother to do or does it have the same problem that it might sure no, I don't think it will do the same because that's in really good shape I think it's So, we got all the parts fixed and um, we have the batteries. So now it's just to get the battery on there. Without causing any short circuits, so I'm going to um, put a bit of protective tape on there. And sort of, uh, I'll show you after I've done it, just to avoid short circuits when one's actually going to um, put some solder on. So, a little bit of uh, side protection. So when I come in here with the soldering arm, then I don't um, short circuit and then. I'm I'm going to start with that plus being separated. So let's see. That's perfect. Oops. Oh, 
そうそうit a bit because topologically as you see it the leg is a bit too long but it's on there now and we have to deal with the plus right. Okay, this is going to be a bit tricky because this is actually damaged a little bit. The ground part, so. I'm going to put some solder on there and see if I can heat it through. Put your finger. <laughs> now that seemed to work okay, but then of course this works like a heat sink, so heat spreads very fast. So I'll just make sure. Oh, that's good enough. It is only a battery, and there isn't like tens of amps going through it, so and it's not exploding. So, oops, that's a bit not in line. Why not? Ashed. Mess up with my knees. Oh, I did. I have to straighten them. Let's see if I've got. get it straight in the line, right? Hey, but I think I got it pretty straight. So let's have a look at the front side. Maybe it could have gone in just a little bit more in the front. In the minus side. Was it already? No, oh, there's quite a bit of clearance. Let's see if I can without burning my finger. Yep, there, pop. Hear it coming through. Of course, that's just the aesthetics. Electronically, it would have worked just fine. But now it's... Um, mechanically in place and there's no smoke. The battery, of course, is a bit warm on the ends because I've been soldering it so and um, so and I'm just going to trim those trim off the ends without short circuiting it <laughs> and I don't want those bits to fly onto the table either
because we want to make sure the tabs of the battery are not longer than all the other bits. Make sure you don't have any bits connected to that or cause a short circuit. I think it's a battery, so it's got power in it. Even if it wouldn't explode, it will still get ruined if you short circuit. So, anyway, that's done now. So, now we have a memory module it's cleaned up, uh, acids been neutralized as best I can. Uh, it'll probably last 10 years, or at least my lifetime. We take these tape bits off. As you see, the tape bits were just to see that I don't um, make any short. Now I have to remember that this is powered, so not to put it on a piece of metal. And uh, now I'm going to put it in its case. But I have to remember that. That end that had a bit of tape. Didn't have it on the other end. Theoretically speaking, this is like a yeah, earth bat. Now one has to realize that when 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 Commodore started, then they had the EMC protection on it. But I mean, the majority of these memory cards, even even the Commodore original, you know, people have opened them and thrown thrown these in the garbage. <laughs> so it's actually the, the, they they they. Yeah, I, I don't think they're super technically needed. Um, uh, and I mean, the regulations they had with for electromagnetic interference or <coughs> electromagnetic uh, cooperability was probably like zero. So. But anyway, we are um, going to put some of this tape on there. Or should we put it on the board? That's an interesting question. On the board or on the edge? I think it might stick better on the on the board. Quite strong tape. Ah, that'll do. It's just to give it. A Actually, it, it lands on the grounding. So, uh, if, uh, when I was testing it without the battery, but uh, and then we shouldn't pr shouldn't forget that there's this plastic protection, and it goes in there like that. And then it's keyed. So there's no no through hole here. So 
Short circuit. Power. Mm. Could have, but I mean, it's, there's no voltage in it, so. Oh. Mm. But it, I should be more careful. Ah, oh, get rid of that. to be careful that the battery is here so that's a metal piece So anyway, I had to. That <laughs> wasn't super easy, but uh, I had to because um, these actually they moved out of alignment. Those so I had to actually compress them together with the, with the um, pliers to put them in a line, and then I just twisted them out like that. So now it should hold the package in place, so we can actually um, test it. Because I don't want to put a. Uh, uh, I'm actually not going to solve this. I'm going to leave it like this, but because uh, I'm just going to have it for my own use. But um, for easier maintenance. And anyway, when this is actually in the computer, then there's no way for this to actually fall apart, anyways. But um, yeah, as long as I didn't ruin the battery, then this is ready for testing. So let's see if it actually still works. So here's my oh you got 500 classic uh, restored and where the memory module should go is behind this little door here. Let's see if we can. here should slot into those pins theoretically speaking and now I have no power on this so um, I should just slot in there and as you see there's quite a lot of space Actually, seem to pop in there because it wasn't really wanting to go. First. So let me press it. Not too on that in there now. And it would be hard to think it would not be in line. And then we just put the cover back because it needs to. The cover is what supports it. So it doesn't Drop out. Okay, so 
Moment. Und in. positive happens. So, first try. No, it does not look good. Red um, power LED does blink. Oop, hope I didn't break it. Okay. Hmm. Could be a connection problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take the module out and put it in a couple of times so but I'll do that offline and then um, come back and see if we get a well the um, good news is that I actually tried, uh, decided to take the memory module out and then try and start it and then you just get this continuous red um, power lap so it didn't seem to break the unit so let's continue from that so um, I took the metal casing off, and so now it actually works. So um, I think I need to check all the. I was thinking maybe there should be an extra tape piece along here or on this inside edge. But anyway, that's definitely since I took the metal off, then um, it actually boots. So, so now we can actually test the. Um, so let's see if it actually loads anything before. interlaced mode I was testing. So I think that for this display it would be better not to have the interlaced. I have to change it in the preference. But anyway, that's aside. What we want to do now is to load down um, test kit and memory test. And, um, and as I said then I need to care I have to take the module out and try and figure out extra insulation is needed. But that's actually a, oh, that's bent up there in the corner. I don't remember that being bent. I'm wondering if that got bent when I put it in the put it in. But anyway. So test kit. I said the RAM will work without um, without the um, protective cover, but I want to get that work. You could have loaded the test kit directly, but I wanted to also see that it actually can still handle it. So, so one megabit total memory detected. 
slow half chip hop. That's the memory. And then see it doesn't crash anymore. should probably run this 24 hours but I think that's good enough showing for that so uh, so what I will do now is I'm going to work on <laughs> trying to figure out what part of this needs to be insulated to, to allow it to work so be back with a comment when I've done that okay that was interesting um bingo works um, that plastic protection that's on the bottom. I mean, I did act, add some extra tape also, but it didn't help. Um, it um, slides around quite a bit, so if it's at, at an extreme position, then there's one there's one component which leg sticks out about there, and it could have been short circuit. But um, yeah, now I have it in place at least. Whoa! Maybe not. <laughs> yep. So let's pull that up again and see what happens. So in this corner, like it stopped now. Now I couldn't get it to to fail. I don't know what that was about. Okay, well let's um, do the ultimate test and that's to put the cover up. But I mean definitely we're dealing with the um, something in the insulation. I think I got the I got the tape in the right place. So let's see what happens when you turn it around and do like that. Not really supposed to do that, but um, let's see if it survives. No. Still something. It's not right. Okay, that's a bit confusing. Um, that corner there is two tray, two like circuit board areas, and this this didn't have. Okay, it's got the insula, the plastic insulation, but but there was no tape or anything. So I put a bit of tape in this corner. No, let's see, probably fell now. Okay, for that, and then we're gonna do the uh, test with the cover because usually after I put the cover on, it stops working. Let's see, I 
Ah, absolutely horrible. What in the world? Something's getting short circuited. When it's pressed on. So what? Gets pressed like that. When you put the cover on. doesn't press on that area. Ah, oh, it could because it's a bit beveled. Oh, I don't think it puts that much pressure. It's these pegs that put pressure on it in this area here. So. Something gets screwed when it's pressed down. What? Because I put some insulation tape there. And this is just ground. That's ground. So. It works, but <laughs> uh, this has that that cord has me beat because, however, I try and protect the cord from these metal bits, it still mechanically fa like electrically fails due to mechanical stress. So either you when you put the cover on, or when you turn the computer around, or when you press on the mo uh, I just can't. For the world of me, I can't figure out exactly what um, what is um, giving. And the other, <coughs> now that I'm running without these, and, and I, okay, I do admit that mo lots of memory cards out there, including Commodore original ones, are run without their card without this mode. Um, and the other odd thing is that now the bottom cover goes on perfect. It was actually bulging when I was using this. <laughs> so I don't know, I can't explain it. But I, I, I can't get it. I cannot get it mechanically stable enough to be happy with it, um, with those covers. I would have liked to have kept it in its original condition. Um, but I um, mean, if the computer is, if I run the risk of breaking the computer, or that the memory is going to be unstable when I move it from a table to one table to the next. We'll turn it around and that's that. Ah, that's also not very good. So I think I'm gonna have to because as I said I just don't I don't know what where something is taking what, what part of it is the uh, uh, causing this short circuit problem. But I mean I don't want to continue trying it because uh, then I I think I risk um I put my computer under risk, so it uh, will end up being dead. So, so I think I'm going to actually call it a day and say that that's, that's the way I'm going to run. Ah, I suppose I can't always win battle, but the card works. So now I have one megabit total mem memory, so I can't really complain. So anyway, that was that. Um, hope you, you learned something from this. Um, I will continue um, these types of efforts in the future also, so um, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon not to miss the next one, and um, see what will come out and then come up with in the next video. Then. See you in the next one. Ah, yeah, me back again. Um, I just wanted to actually um, 
show, if possible, in a little bit more detailed way this one. So we have this um, hole here, and um, that should fit the memory module in its packaging, in its shielding, but uh, really I couldn't do it. But uh, what I want to do is to show you the, um, the, the just the basic cord. So I've done a better job of cleaning it, so I took away the uh, you know, the, the, the tape and glue and stuff and it's made it all nice and clean. So now I'm just going to um, insert it in here. So you see how incredibly well it fits in there, like, and then it plugs in like that, and it's actually quite well in there right now. And then, I'm going to take the cover, and then we put the cover on. As you see, the, the cover is flat. Actually, it did get a bit bent <laughs> when I was trying to put the uh, when I had the shielding on, and then, then it's got a bit bent out of shape. But I hope it will get finally straightened. But as you see, it's completely on with no, with no problem. There was no, no forcing, on. and the tabs are here, so I think that they're supporting the board. So anyway, let's um, plug in what's needed. Um, see if it still works. Next to me on the table. So let me put that on first. And then we see what happens when we. Let's just let it start up. And I put it on. Let's see if it works. Yep. So I didn't bust it by completely cleaning it again. <laughs> I always get a bit worried that when one cleans things that they still work. So. that interlace back to non interlace. And the thing is that memory module will not sort of fall, even if this is upside down, it won't fall into the cavity because it's, uh, the actual circuit board is wide enough to it, it actually fits on the rails that surround the um, cover. So it's, so it's mechanically, once you put the cover on, it's mechanically very solid in place. So there's no like mechanical reason not to run it. Um, Without the shield, or yeah, without the shielding. The shielding is more for electronic interference protection. Back in the day, 
so under the EMC standards that existed 30 years ago. Mm. And then we just pistol my just let it run a little long. I actually um, ran a, a, a test that um, ran all night. And, uh, so that's enough for that. I just wanted to, and then. There was one thing that I, when I was so flustered about um, it not working in a shell that we need to actually see was there battery clock. So it has found a battery clock. What is reset date and time? Oh, so it's sure it sets it to. Some 2016, okay. Months. Mm -hmm. Today it's the 26th, and the time is 6.34, oh year of course. I don't know if this is running a 24 hour clock, yes it is. want to see now is some We did find a battery backed up uh, real time clock. We were able to set the um, yeah, 26th of September 2023, 1841. So, good, yeah, we're working on real time clock. Yeah, so that was um, pretty much the extension. Um, so, I'm going to. Um, use the memory module like that. It was uh, very strange that I couldn't get it to work um, within its shielding. Even when I added a, basically I did a little bit off camera, I added a seemingly ridic ridiculous amount of um, extra insulation tape and stuff. And it still, still was just um, basically mechanically failing. So in, in either the uh, 
when you inserted it when it was upside down, uh, usually then it worked. And then when you put the cover on, then usually it, it fell either there or um, when I um, turned it, uh, yeah, turned it around uh, this way around, then it, then it would randomly fail. But uh, when I run the card separate, then I get no random failures whatsoever. It's, it's rock, rock solid, as I said, I ran it through the memory test throughout the night. And, oh, no, I also remember to test the real time clock, which was actually one of the main objectives of fixing the card. So, yeah. So I just wanted to add this segment into the, into the video before it ends. Anyway. Okay, I say that ah, would have liked to have had it like original, original, but I, <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna keep it as a separate. You know, the, the card is just the card. I think it'll be better for the computer. Also, it actually makes it much easier to check the battery from time to time. So, yeah. so now I'm going to get rid of the interlacing. <laughs> For the, uh, it looks like for this monitor, it's not the not the absolute best. Where was it now? There, workbench insulation off. Um, I think it might complain about right protected workbench now. Yeah. Enable writing on the workbench disk. So, that's saved. Oops. Put the right protection back. But usually you don't want to write to the workbench. And then, um, need to Start it again, I guess that. Yeah, seemed to make the picture quality that much, or didn't improve the situation with the picture quality. I was just testing to see if it would actually do something useful. So, see, now you got a much better picture, a retro picture. No? <laughs> oh, what? seen that before but I must say this disc has been uh, I have a backup of this disc and, and I've been using this disc um, both to test this computer and then I've been um, using it a lot on the uh, on the other the, um, other projects other Amiga projects I've been working on so it has um, been used in this drives they're not exactly in great shape <laughs> And still, we have the correct time 26 September 2023. Ah, that's the, that's the thing with retro computing. You get so, ah, oh, look, now we have a real time clock. <laughs> Lots of things you can take for granted um, in the uh, modern world. Not if you're running a retro computer. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up for that.